I forgot to, I was really nervous when I first came up to, I'm sorry, God. I was really nervous when I first came up to speak and I forgot to thank um, my Aunt Shelly and Uncle Carlton for letting me shoot in their house without asking for any insurance or anything like that. So it was very brave of you. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Um, should we maybe give another hand to the film? My first question, Chad, how do you feel? This is, this is huge. How do you feel? Introduce yourself first. Oh, hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm Connor. Um, I'll be moderating this discussion for the next 30, 45 minutes. I think at the end, we'll have a, a question period, so hold on to your questions and generate some more as we speak. Um, I know y'all confused. <laughs> This is your first feature film. Woo! Woo! <laughs> so I'll ask again. How are you feeling? I'm very tired. <laughs> um, I have been up and down, overwhelmed with emotions, um, both great and not so great but because they weren't so great and they became great that means that they were always great um and you know i feel like i'm at a point on the roller coaster i'm not sure if i can identify it but i'm somewhere on there and i'm very happy yeah i think maybe to start we should just talk about what charged writing of the film, where did it come from, did something happen that caused you to write it? <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> um, well, the, when my mom first saw it, she said, um, as soon as the credits start rolling, she goes, well, I hope this isn't based on a true story. <laughs> Respond. No. Um, um, I mean, I think a couple incidences. I think um, I was living in Portland when I started writing this, and um, in the midst of the pandemic, spending a lot of time by myself. Um, so, both learning how to write, um, but also like, learning a lot of things about myself. Um, learning that I had never purchased flowers for myself. Um, so when I did that for the first time, I was kind of like, well, I don't have anything to put these in. What the fuck, where do I, you know? Um, um, and then that just kind of, I, found, I thought that was interesting. Um, and it kind of just stumbled from there. And then um, I moved home and I was like, you know, they say every great story starts with a stranger comes to town and da 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 da, da. Um, And you know, what's it like to be, to feel strange in a place you grew up in, um, in a very casual sense. Um, not because, you know, um, not for any like political reason, but more so just from a very like personal, um, standpoint and something that you feel like you can't talk about. So it's like, yeah, I just found certain things interesting. Did the script change a lot from when you first wrote it um, last year, year and a half ago? And how did it change from the beginning to the end? The script changed up until like the day I exported it and sent it <laughs> to festivals. Um, Cause that's just how it goes. Um, scripts change when you're editing. There kind of really is no script. 
um, when I was first writing it, I really wanted, and I think you can kind of feel it in the film. When I was first writing it, I was really focused on the male on the male character, um, and I just found Faye um, Taylor's character to just be more interesting as I was writing it. Um, which I feel like is a bit of a pattern. I don't know, I was raised by women and um, I think I do just generally think women tend to be more interesting, but I think because everybody thinks women are more interesting that, that like men are more interesting and it's just like this, this thing where it's like, you know, I don't know. Um, but I think when I was writing it, I had a tendency to neglect the male character because I was like, oh, she's so, interesting um yeah and then I was like well, what happened at the house I was like well I gotta put something that happened at the house um and so then I wrote about something that happened at the house or it didn't happen at the house <laughs> there you go <laughs> obviously this is the first time that fingers in the wind is screening for an audience, did you learn anything from watching it with a group of people that you didn't know about the film necessarily before when you thought you were done with it? I was having a conversation with a friend not too long ago. And I showed her an unfinished version of the film. She's here and I love her very much. Um, and she had mentioned to me that there are parts in the film that she found funny, but when she was watching it with just me, she didn't know if she was supposed to laugh or not. <laughs> and so she policed herself from laughing. And I really am not the laugh police. I think people, I don't write jokes, I think, really dramatic shit is funny. I think people going through things is funny. I think when I go through shit, it's a really funny. Um, so, you know, I don't know if I learned anything more, but I do think I felt a bit affirmed, you know, like when certain things, when people were reacting to certain things, you know. When you're sitting in a theater for the first time hearing your own work, um, even just a little mumble of like laughter is, very affirmational and affirmative, sorry. Um, and yeah. You can bat this off if this is a classification question that you don't feel like answering, but I'm curious. You have described the film to me before as a, as a coming of age film. I'm curious about why you were interested in making a coming of age film about a character who, by all official accounts, has already come of age. As a 25 year old woman, I wonder if you can talk. To That's so funny because I was, as you were asking that, I was thinking, well, it's a film about somebody who needs to come of age. Like, okay, girl, like, you know. Um, and um, I think that's something I kind of learned as I was, after I was writing it, as I was working on it, while I was editing it. Um, you know, my thoughts about the movie have changed significantly over the course. I mean, it's been two years. So like the things that I have thought, the film I thought I was making is very different, very different, very different, like each stage of the way. Um, and I remember, I mean, we were talking about that, I think like when I was crowdfunding and I was like, okay, well I need to tell, I need to tell people that like it's something, you know, cause I don't care to do that, but you know, when I actually watch it, the way that I feel is that it's a film about somebody who needs to come of age and the kind of necessity of moving on, um, not because not in a um, not in a paternalistic way and not in a, in a um, militant way, but it's like it's the only way. You know, like you gotta move on from things. You know, it's literally a survival mechanism. Um, and it's important to share, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. You've assembled this really beautiful cast. And I'm wondering if you can all talk about what maybe attracted you to the script, what you saw in the film when you first read it that made you want to be involved. Taylor, with you. Go ahead. 
to them. I had, when I first read the script, I had just broken up with a friend, like a, like a breakup, but with a friend, and literally first read, I was in tears, because I don't know, the first scene just got me, like where it was like, I didn't know someone would want to intentionally break my friendship um, for something that I probably can't even trace back to like why or there wasn't a real conversation on you know why we broke up as friends but the timing of which I read the script it was just like I'm, I'm feeling this <laughs> you know like I, I know what this feels like it's so subtle it's so insidious on just why like someone just doesn't want to maintain a relationship with you um so that's what brought me in the first time and then obviously like chat you know I, I always wanted to work with chat so um that's beautiful yeah <laughs> Oddly enough, I was going through something very similar, so we talked about it on the day that we filmed it. I had just broken up with a friend, and I was like, all right, this will be a great place to channel this energy. Um, on top of the fact that I really enjoy scripts where I don't know what's going on. Like, I really like that. <laughs> like, you know, at least I'll be like on the edge of my seat. I'm like, you know, what's her name? What's she going through? So I really enjoyed, um, the fact that I wasn't sure what was going on and could really relate to the idea of kind of like, I don't want to say the word trauma, but impactful situations playing on a loop within your mind and those things are just sort of recreating the perspective in which you see life. It's like, it's shifting everything because something's so stuck in your brain and it's so confusing. You look out in the world and you can't really see it clearly, right? Because of trauma. So I really was going through that at the time and I said, oh, great place to channel the energy, divine timing. I know it's gonna be poetic and cinematic. So, because, you know, talented man right here. So that's why. Maya's been with me since like the worst days of filmmaking. My pleasure. <laughs> Tori, if you say you broke up with a friend too. So. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> well, this is my second film that I've done for Chad. So when he calls, I come running. And he called me and he said, hey, I got a, a small part, but it's an important part. And I really would like you to um, do this role. And when you love the craft, um, you're, you're willing to to do whatever you know for someone that you care about and so i hadn't even read the script but i'm like as long as you don't have me look like the frumpy lady in the first one <laughs> i will definitely um you know i'm there but you know he didn't have me looking too bad in this one he definitely challenges me um, in the roles that he put me in because it's totally nothing like i am and i have to recreate and be this total different person so I really enjoyed that. When me and Taylor came down for a rehearsal with you, you definitely said, oh my god, I'm just like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is me as a mom. Those words came out of your mouth. Well, yeah, I, well, I'm a mother of four, so, you know, I could see myself in some of those you know, roles. But. Tori brings a levity to everything that we do together that um, I, I really appreciate um, for some reason every time that she's introduced onto the screen, um, I feel like the film immediately gets grounded um, and I appreciate that so much. I, I don't know, it's something that I realize like while I'm editing or like watching the, the shit in playback. Um, and yeah, I, I, I just really appreciate it. Um, hello. <laughs> um, what made me really excited about the script was when I first, I think I read one scene first. Um, and the way that Chad describes things in his screenwriting, 
impacts me because I get a lot of the questions that I have answered, but I also get a picture painted while I'm reading. Um, and the this first thing that I read was the scene at the at the lake, um, and just being able to see the characteristics and what the relationship between these two people were, were is was um, <laughs> was really cool. And then when I read the script for the first time all the way through, all the little uh, shots and stills that we have of cracks in the sidewalk, the clouds, um, cracks in the ceiling, the city. Um, that was really beautiful for me because I think when I read that, it, I was coming up on my second year living in New York and I was feeling that, I was feeling more connected to my surroundings um, after a long time of feeling ungrounded, after a long time of feeling unsure of myself and I think it was nice to be able to see a world through the eyes of a character who is very certain, who notices the small things. So that's something that I'm learning to do for myself is to notice the beauty in the tiny moments, even when it can look like nothing. Um, so yeah. Taylor. So this is a movie, I mean, I, we've talked about this before. This is a movie that's kind of about eyes and you have this really open face and we kind of register your eyes no matter where you are. And it's, a lot, it's also a lot of silences, right? It's faces kind of register, registering the gravity of the situation, people just looking at each other, staring at each other. I want to know how you prepared for a role like this that requires so much kind of, yeah, I guess silence. I was, I was going through such a transitional time when we started to film. When I first started this at all, um, I had like just started acting, you know, and I, at the time before I started acting school was this. And so preparing, it was luckily so parallel to my life at the moment that I think I had to come to a, uh, a sense of honesty that I was personally fe like feeling and hurt. So I think that even when I'm introspective, like on this, like while filming, I'm actually like thinking about it, just like everything, like at at all. So I think that like me preparing was just a lot of me processing my my own kind of hurt and breakup and confusion because it, it was confusing like in real life and just for for, for Faye um, she didn't know what was like reality or what she could trust um, so I, it was just more so just being introspective about like what I was really feeling and even if I didn't know like only I told Connor, I said, I think, I think this is what you're referring to, the conversation we had the other day. I was like, I don't know, her eyes are so damn big, like, I swear she can't lie. Like, like she'll say one thing, but like, her eyes will say, like, the truth. Um, which is a compliment, especially for film, you know, a gift. So the film begins <clears throat> with a breakup, of course, two friends breaking up, and the disillusion of a relationship kind of leads into, I guess, what you could maybe call an identity crisis. Um, why was friendship an interesting space for you to use to meditate on identity specifically, desire specifically? This is another answer that like definitely I think changed when I first started writing and like now I think well maybe not I think maybe it's just bigger I guess I don't know but I think that um, you know obviously we pick things up from our friends um, we have a tendency to um, we have a tendency to 
give and receive our friends differently than we do with our romantic partners. And I think we have this um, social structure of making a difference between uh, friendship and the romantic relationship. And it's very hard to deal with growing up. I think it's very, um, I think a lot of people struggle with that. I think that um, you know, I personally always, you know, you know, you love your friends. You know, you love your friends. And um, I showed an early version of this to another friend. Um, and he said that, he said something very simple at the end when it ended. He was like, well, she wants to be loved. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, well, it's more than that. <laughs> you know, it's deeper than that. Um, but he's right. He's right. Um, you know, and it's a very simple, it's like, you know, romance and friendship, but it's like, she wants to be loved, you know? And I just think those boxes that we create for ourselves, um, and because of that, those, uh, the expectations of a friendship and of a romance, um, the ways that they're supposed to be different, are very challenging for people to deal with. And, yeah. There's a lot of ambiguity, I think, in, in the relationship between the, the nameless young man played by Azende and, and Taylor's character, Faye Wood. Did you know in your when you were writing the script, did you already know what that relationship was? Because it seems like it sort of does straddle this line that you're talking about. It's sort of unclear whether it's supposed to be, you know, a close friendship, if it's the beginnings of maybe a romantic relationship, maybe friendships are just romantic. I don't think that I knew when I was writing like the first draft of the script, but I do think that um, over time and obviously like through rehearsal, and we were like rigorously rehearsing and then like changing things in the rehearsal so rehearsals you know, um, that I was recognizing watching it that um, the immediate expectation was romance because these are two attractive people you know um, and I think that Faye's character or Taylor's character, Faye. Um, part of the the, ne the necessity of her to move on is this putting, okay, you're either a friend or you're a partner, right? You're either, you know, it's this or that. And I think we watch her kind of, not necessarily struggle, but trying to figure that out in real time until at that final crosswalk scene, you know, she needs, I don't even know if it's you need a friend, but it's, or I don't know if it's she needs a friend, but it's more so it's like she needs love and, you know, she doesn't want him to walk her home, I'll just put it that way, but like she wants a hug, you know, um, so yeah. Zende, do you want to, you look like you want to add something. Yeah, I, I wanted to talk about um, the line between romantic relationships and friendships, um, and like specifically the intimacy, because that was something that I noticed watching it, because um, I wasn't there that day of filming. The friend breakup scene between Nelly and Faye, it felt like a- Naya and Faye. Naya and Faye, Naya. sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's the end names. Um, felt like a, it just felt like a regular breakup, and it felt, intimate and it, it didn't seem it didn't seem like just friendship you know two friends moving apart it's something I realized by the end as well um, you talked about uh, your character talked about basically feeling like you don't know your daughter and your daughter feels like she doesn't know the friend and then I come along my character comes along and in a day we're trying to reckon, you know, who is this other person? Um, so 
sorry, I lost my train of thought. But yeah, <laughs> um, I, I think that the line between friendship and romantic relationships is really thin. And I think sometimes, like Chad, like you said, we have an unrealistic or like slanted version of like what each type of relationship deserves because you know your friends are intimate partners just as much as a romantic partner, and we saw that with their friendship. I also think. I also think we not there yet. Yes, yeah, I know. That's my aunt. Um, I um, but to that point of like the knowing, just briefly, like that's more important to me. And I think writing this, that's a something that kind of forced me to grow up a bit is that the knowing is more important than the um, trying to isolate your um, relationship into some kind of, I guess, like, category or box. It's like, okay, but do you know this person? Like, is this somebody that you actually really know and trust, you know? It just, that just feels more important to me. Maya, you're scene at the beginning is pretty intense. I'm wondering what the experience was like for you acting that out, given that you had broken up with a friend. What did it feel like to sort of, not necessarily restage that, but, but experience it again acting? Yeah. It was very cathartic. Yeah, it was, it was nice. It was nice to get that off my chest, although I think me in real life Probably wouldn't have been that poised, you know, might have been a little bit more, you know. I'm from Philly. <laughs> you know. But um it was really nice to channel it in such a in such a uh, organized way. Like the character had really thought it out and was like really came up with the reasons why. And so it helped me categorize the own, my own reasons why I was like done with that friend because it was just in the heat of the emotion. I'm, I'm over it. Blah, 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 blah. But when I'm really like, okay, well, these are the reasons why. And you know, the character broke it down. And she's like, I don't feel like I know you. I'm like, who am I sharing my secrets to? I'm, I'm telling you everything all the time. And you're like, oh yeah, girl, wanted to karaoke. And it really, like, you know, similar to what Chad just said, it opened up a portal in my brain doing that scene of like, yes, like your friendships have to have certain, I don't wanna say requirements, y'all, cause it's not a job, you know what I mean? But like, things have to click and connect, you have to have things in common, you have to like, move in a certain fluidity, just as it, like we would vet an intimate partner, you know, oh, they don't, they, they live across the world, you know. You would really be like, these are the things that don't work and work about this intimate romantic relationship it really opened a portal in my brain during that scene why uh, it is so important to do that with friendships as well because you'll think, oh, I just get together with this person and we have a good time, boom, we're friends. No. Like, the morals and the values got to be aligned. Like, you, it has to have some closeness and trust or it won't sustain. So it was nice for me to do that. It was very therapeutic because I figured out, okay, why actually don't I like my friend in real life? Like, I think I went home after that scene and was like, <laughs> and yeah, I got it all off my chest. It was nice. I was grateful for it. Oh, yeah. thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, why did you decide? So there's that scene at the crosswalk, which is, I think, a, a turning point in the film. Everything kind of changes after that. Why did you decide that you wanted to render it with still images? I know that you thought about that and it didn't look like that before and you sort of changed it. Why did you end on that sequence? Because I didn't like the first one. <laughs> um, I, I just thought that making them still would I mean, sometimes it's just, I didn't like the first one. Um, but I, I do think that it, it made it more arresting for me. Um, and I honestly, I actually use still images like throughout the movie. Um, 
even when it's hidden, I use still images. I extend frames very often. I don't usually like to say that in front of actors, but there's a lot of shit in that movie that like, I'm definitely altering the fuck out of your performance. <laughs> um, but um, I just thought that my goal is to sit people down in the, not necessarily in the drama, but like in the what's happening. Um, and particularly with this film, I wanted to just arrest. I wanted to suspend. Um, Make everyone uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 Um, you have these little tricks that you do throughout the film that sort of give us the sense that there's something going on that we might not necessarily be able to see. That there's something concealed, that there's, you know, there are people who appear and disappear, there are names that change, there are handprints that appear on the wall. Can you just talk about the decision to to do that and, and what atmosphere you were trying to achieve and, and why you did it in that specific way? I think it's really effective, it's, it's subtle and it, it sort of creeps up on you. I don't have an explanation for that. I don't I don't mean to be like a bad like that's just me. Like I I I don't know. I like um I don't even know how to describe this. I like mysterious shit. I like thing I people change so you know change their name too, you know. Um I like alluding to things. I like, I don't like confusion, which is funny, I guess, but I, I, but I do like um, peeling things back. And like, I do like, oh God, here I go. There's a quote and it's Jean-Luc Godard who just died a couple days ago. And it's a very simple quote, just, you know, the job of cinema is to get people to see what they cannot see. And so I'm just trying to get people to see, or myself to see, you know, what I cannot see. And yeah, that's it. I think that's a good place to start with. The audience questions, yeah. don't you? Yeah, I do. Do you? Do you should we clap first? Y'all want to clap first? There's, there's microphones in the corner. I mean, you don't have to walk to it. I can't hear you. I'll just repeat the question. I was so hopeful that nobody asked this question. Did everyone hear their question? No. She, my aunt wants to know uh, how he came up with the name Fingers in the Um, I couldn't think of a name, and I was listening to a Roland Kirk album, and there was a song on the album called Fingers in the Wind, <laughs> and it's a really beautiful song, um, and I just thought it encapsulated the feeling, and so I just kept listening to it, because I had it on vinyl, I just kept listening to it over and over and over again while I would sit down and work on the on the movie. Um, and I was and then I was like, okay, well I don't think I can actually just like take a title. You know, people do it all the time, but I was like, oh I don't think I can just like steal a title. Um but I do think, you know, my backup answer is that like, you know, when you hold your finger up in the wind, like it doesn't move. But like the wind is like pushing against it and you know that's fun to me transient and people become like so uncomfortable then comfortable then uncomfortable again uh how long did it take for you guys to like 
get chemistry with each other to lose it on camera and gain it again? That's a great question. That's a great question. Wow. Yeah. Um, I met a Zenday. Well, we met over Zoom first reading, and then met in person. Oh my God! Wait. I'm trying to think. Was the first time meet, like meeting the rehearsal at the park? No, it was at Mel's. Okay, good. Overall. I was like, that was crazy. It was pretty much like jump in meeting. I moved back to New York. I'm meeting Zenday. We're on like just reading scripts, re re rehearsing. I didn't really know a Zenday like that, and we didn't hang out outside of rehearsal. So it was just like we just was rehearsing all the time. So we just built a relationship, I guess. Well, that's know. not fair. I, we had some. <laughs> I'm like, what else? Well, we had you know, our rehearsals. You know, I wasn't paying them, so the hours just went on and on, and we did sit down and like talk, like. Yeah, but we. There was a lot of intermediate time. Yeah, yeah, but dive right into rehearsals. We didn't hang out much outside of rehearsal, but we hung out within rehearsal. Yeah. We would take a break. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I hadn't met, well, I have met, um, I want to call you Maya. Maya. I had met Maya on the first film, but I hadn't met any other, of the other cast members. Um, but we just kind of gelled. We just jumped in and, you know, we both knew our roles and we knew what needed to be done. And um, you kind of feed off of it. You know, we fed off of each other's energy and uh, what we were putting into the script. And of course, Chad made changes as we, <laughs> as we went along, as he always does. But um, I think that's just part of the art um, of acting. And it's part of the craft. And if you study your craft really well, you're really able to um, really put that emotion and those feelings into what your, your, your script is about. I guess I'll go. Um, yeah, obviously we had a very intimate scene, so um, we kind—it was like we kind of jumped into it. Like I, I, we rehearsed one time. We rehearsed that scene like with the three of us one time, and it was really just that trust, that feeling of like, okay, I'm in good hands. Everybody here is ready to act. There's no funny stuff going on. We, we were telling a story, so we just gonna jump right in it. And um, you know, we were filming it. It was just, it was just like we had this understanding of what had to happen. What do you, what does everyone need? Do we have the mouthwash? Do we have the mints? You know. And it's funny. I think we all had like sandwiches with onions before that. So we had like you know the toothbrush on deck. So it was really just like making sure we all had what we need so that we all felt comfortable enough to be in that situation. But we didn't. Um, get to know each other too well before like my scene with her, my scenes with the three of us, it was just kind of like, all right, like Tori said, you do the craft, you come and it's about creating that, the art is creating that chemistry right in that moment. Um, I think Taylor said, I mean, we didn't really hang out that much outside of rehearsal, but we rehearsed so often and I feel like so many of the work, those rehearsals, I was doing a horrible job, so I felt comfortable. <laughs> no, I, at the beginning, when I was still finding my footing, you know, I feel like the first two weeks, um, it was really just reacting to you and figuring out what your grip on the character was, because I figured like that wasn't really my business, you know, I have my ideas of who Faye is, but I'm gonna come and see what you bring to it, and then we can figure it out together. Um, and that's where a lot of my comfort came from, just falling together. Um, and, you know, having closed rehearsals so no one could see us fall. <laughs> um, we were in the park. We were in Herbert Von King oh. Park. We were oh. further in. I felt comfortable, more comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Well, they all got to rehearse a lot, but I was the outlier in Philly, so. Did you kinda... rehearsal with well, yeah, I rehearsed with Taylor, but I didn't Our memories see of like project, a lot of the other like, parts. I'm just seeing a lot of the other parts like today. Because <laughs> I just came and showed up and did my part, and that was it. But I will say, actually, about both you and Maya, because I don't really have scenes, like, you know, intense scenes with either of you, um, it was nice to show up 
and just have the few moments to meet each other and you know see what the energy is and both of you are like Chad said very grounding people and I felt very comfortable around you and I think overall Chad did a great job of manicuring the set to make sure that everyone had one goal one vision in mind and that we were gracious with each other which is was the most important thing to me. No, I'm not asking to. No, I'm quite not asking my time. I wanted to ask you, speaking of beautifully melanated cast, what was the importance of having like an all black cast? And how did that like, with regards to the comfort level on set and, cause it was just beautiful to watch and how important was that to you? That's my question. I mean, that's how I grew up. That's like, you know, I mean, it's just my family. It's just what I'm used to. Um, it's just life. Yeah, it's just life. That's just kind of where I gravitate towards, I guess. Um, I mean, um, I mean. Can I just say that it, it's it's like I'm not gonna lie. Not knowing anyone on this set and also having met Chad first day of re well not met Chad but like getting to know Chad like at rehearsal it's like a yeah like we I was also shocked by how like quick we connected and how much love was on on the set with how many people were like switched out and like all this stuff it's like you would have thought we knew each other for so long because the, the, the support was real it was like it was a very eye-to-eye -eye connection like even off off screen just like making sure that we're okay how's your day like are you hungry like you know like just like very like caring about who we are just as people that just made the I guess that sh shine through you know so it was feel like we've known each other for like 10 plus years yeah and to that point I mean to what I was also saying about like that's how I grew up I mean I consider you know when I'm on a set you know, when you're making a film, you become really close with a bunch of people and then you guys kind of usually just like disperse, you know? Um, but it is like creating a little mini family and um, I guess like I'm like a family person. Um, you know, what was that about? Um, and yeah, um, I, I like, I, I mean, I just like to make sure that people are cared for and um, I like people that care for me, and that's it. Fingers in the wind, everyone. <laughs> 